Hello, everybody, and happy 2021. Good morning to you. The year 2020 has been a particularly unique year for most of us. Despite the grave concern about SARS-CoV-2 virus, I'm glad that many of you are still committed to saving lives. On behalf of the Singapore Heart Foundation, I commend you for your courage and dedication for this selfless cause in, in this season of COVID-19. By now, we ought to know that CPR is an aerosol generating procedure. The close proximity required for chest compression is indeed a challenge to protect the rescuer and to perform CPR effectively. In the initial phase of COVID-19 pandemic, all attention has focused on the condition. Even the once fearsome heart disease was not excluded. Strangely enough, the hospital saw a drastic fall in the number of patients requiring hospitalization for acute heart conditions such as acute heart failure or heart attacks. Here in this slide, uh, we are showing what happened in the state of Massachusetts in the United States. The first case of COVID-19 was reported in February, and then subsequently, uh, the city, uh, the state went on a lockdown. As we can see here, when the city went to the lockdown, there was a drastic fall, in fact, a 43% fall in terms of the uh, patients who were admitted for acute heart conditions. On the other hand, we see that there was a, a, a substantial rise in the number of patients having uh, COVID-19 in, in, in that state. To an optimist, this trend may be a cause for celebration because staying at home could have reduced the unhealthy, high-salt, high-fat diet that we eat outside. The air pollution from, may have been uh, also reduced from fewer vehicles on the road and there could have been more time for the person to perform exercise. But similar to any natural disaster, the pandemic is likely to be a stressful event for everyone. This is frequently associated with acute heart problems. The well-intended public health initiative of physical distancing and staying at home could dissuade those with unclear or vague symptoms away from seeking medical attention. In Australia, for example, a hospital reported the time taken by a patient with a heart attack to see a doctor was four times longer than the pre-COVID era. Let's take a look at what happened, what is happening outside the hospital. In this slide, we are showing uh, what happened in Paris, France from 15th of May 2011 to 7th of March 2020. Over this period, there were almost 31,000 uh, what we call non-traumatic, that means not due to injuries, out of hospital collapse and uh, in Paris and the surrounding suburbs. The Parisian lockdown began on 17 of March and during the COVID-19 pandemic, the number of collapse out of the hospital almost doubled. Uh, when we look back in the hospital, the proportion of patients that were admitted uh, to the hospital for acute heart conditions fell drastically from 22.8% to about 12.8%. So what does all this information mean to us? Well, people are not coming to hospital probably because more people are collapsing and dying outside the hospital. And what does that mean? That means that we there's a greater need for your expertise in terms of performing CPR in the community. In fact, the problem may be even larger than what was uh, reflected in the report because the study involved only those who have called emergency medical services. Certainly, there are more of those who die at home or elsewhere and emergency services were not activated. So, what is happening in the community? There were several studies done in Paris, Lombardy, in Italy and in New the New York City. And they found that there was actually a two to three times higher occurrence for out of hospital cardiac arrest. They, interestingly, they occur more frequently at home. More than 90% of these uh, collapses uh, uh, were uh, occurred at home, likely because there were lockdowns 
and the people were staying at home uh, rather than going outside. But more importantly, there were less patients with shock per rhythm. There was more than 50% reduction and there were less uh, patients, uh, persons who were willing to perform or who had uh, bystander CPR perform on them, reducing by about 15 to 25%. Not surprisingly, the ambulance response time was longer by about one to two minutes uh, than the pre-COVID era. And there were the, the, the ambulance uh, crew starting or continuing CPR were, uh, were less than the, before the COVID system uh, season. Collapsing at home uh, sometimes may be, uh, 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 a CPR may be able to perform for those who collapse at home uh, because um, the people may have been pre-exposed uh, pre to, uh, to COVID uh, as the other family members. However, there are other psychological and uh, mental uh, stress uh, factors that may play a role and may cause the reduction in terms of the performance of CPR itself. So whatever it is with all this, um, um, all these uh, factors happening, the outcome of the out-of-hospital uh, cardiac arrest uh, has been uh, adversely impacted. There were fewer uh, patients, about less than 50%, about 50% of them uh, less uh, returning to normal circulation. There were also fewer who survived uh, to go to the hospital and about even fewer that uh, were survived to after hospital discharge. So one of the things that uh, the bystanders are concerned is whether they will contract the COVID-19 uh, disease itself. There was an estimation in Seattle in the United States about what is the risk of uh, survive, uh, contracting and surviving COVID-19. Here, uh, they found that the risk or they estimated that the risk of transmission to a person performing bystander CPR without PPE, that's personal protection equipment, uh, using compression alone was about 10%. And uh, in that study in Seattle, they found that less than 10% of this outpatient uh, out of hospital cardiac arrest cases had COVID-19 positive. Therefore, the number of rescuers that could be potentially affected in Seattle was about 1 in 100 procedures. They estimated that the mortality rate for COVID-19 was about 1%, and therefore the mortality risk is about 1 in 10,000 uh, procedures. Uh, conversely, when we look at for every 10,000 CPR procedures, more than 300 lives were saved uh, when, when it is performed routinely. So um, we can see that uh, this is, although a, a, a risky procedure, but the risk is not very high. So how can we minimize the risk of uh, com uh, contracting COVID-19 uh, uh, during this pandemic era? So when we assess responsiveness of the victim, we should just shake the patient, maintaining physical distancing. We should speak loudly to him in various languages or dialects where possible, instead of uh, coming close to the, the person uh, or whispering to him. Observe for breathing or bodily movements uh, rather than trying to open the airway and do not put the face or your face next to the mouth or the nose of the, pa of the, of the patient. Then when performing CPR, wear a mask, glove, face shield or PPE if available. Put a cloth or face mask over the nose and the mouth of the person. Use an oxygen mask if available. Use compression, chest compression only CPR. Do not perform rescue breathing or mouth-to-mouth -mouth ventilation and use hands-free handphone to communicate with emergency medical dispatch center. Here there's a video clip from the uh, UK Resuscitation Council illustrating some of these points that we have uh, discussed. Can we have the video please? If you find someone who is collapsed and not breathing normally, the first priority is to call for help. Do not place your face close to theirs to check for breathing. Use your phone to call for an ambulance and then put your phone onto speakerphone mode 
as the person on the other end will give you instructions and guidance. Find a towel or a piece of clothing and lay it over the person's mouth and nose. Do not use anything that could damage the face or obstruct the mouth. The aim is to reduce the risk of virus transmission. Do not do mouth to mouth, but start immediately doing chest compressions. Place the heel of your interlocked hands in the center of the chest. Push hard and fast, ideally to the tempo of staying alive. Thank you. After performing the CPR procedure, please wash your hand and other areas that have, could have been contaminated. Use disinfectant if available and change to a new set of clothing as soon as possible. Ensure that uh, you, you inquire about uh, contact tracing procedures and also screening procedures that may be requi required. The Singapore Heart Foundation and the Singapore Civil Defence Force has helped to keep the community first responders safe. They have added about 20,000 face masks and hand sanitizers to publicly available AED cabinets so that this will help to reduce the chance of contracting the virus. So with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention and have a happy National Life Saving Day. Keep on saving lives. Thank you.